Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Claire Barrett, and welcome to the first workshop at API Days Paris. This session is brought to you by the API Collective. We're a group of experts in APIs with different specialties and experiences. And our session today is to represent some of that collective experience from medium, large and different sized organizations, which we're going to run as a simulation. Uh, so a simulation of the type of situations that occur on actual API projects that we hear about um, and see and observe. And those of you in the audience get to participate as well with any questions and contributions that you'd like to make via the online chat. So who's the fictional company that we're going to use as a simulation today? Uh, this is not a particular, no particular organization has been uh, um, uh, we brought out in here. It's a, it's a combination of uh, different experiences and you'll meet a few characters. Um, I'm uh, the program manager, API program manager. Um, Medi is uh, uh, new to company, commercial manager in our um, team. Uh, John uh, is like myself, a long-termer in our company, and he's going to be playing the role of the enterprise architect. And Alan has just come on board a couple of weeks ago uh, to join us in a coaching capacity as an API expert and uh, helper in our program. Our program's been running um, for a while, uh, um, uh, three years. Uh, it's um, been uh, you know, a, a slow and steady uh, program of, of change, um, has taken a lot of um, uh, acceleration over the recent months and years as we've been broadening and widening out our, our broader digital, digital transformation program. Um, this year, of course, under COVID 2020, uh, for us as a company has been um, hard work. And we are now in a process in this organization of um, pivoting to, uh, we've, we've had to pivot a lot of our business online. Um, we've had to do a lot of you know, rapid workarounds and uh, stressful responses uh, at the same time as us coping with uh, living and working in such a different um, space and, and world. But it's been a big year. Um, and what you're going to see through this simulation is uh, some of the interactions uh, that we are, um, that we need to have um, with our new sponsor uh, in terms of. So the first thing that we're going to um, uh, invite you to join us and, and listen in on is um, uh, and participate is uh, as a program um, review. Uh, so it's um, our first proper meeting with our new sponsor, Medi, and uh, I'm delighted to have them here today. So um, uh, great guys to see you. Um, uh, how's it all going? I'm, to be honest, I'm feeling a bit like, uh, you know, it is December at the end of what has been the most, uh, you know, extraordinary year for everyone. Um, I'm, I'm exhausted. Uh, uh, it's just been such, a, you know, co coping with having been managing projects for years, um, very comfortably uh, in our environment with lots of different types of people, not being able to see people face to face as I found it um, really quite stressful. Um, John, you know, you and I have been working together a long time. How, how are you? Well, well, Claire, it certainly has been a challenging year. Um, uh, lots of changes in priority uh, to enable the workforce to remote uh, to, to work remotely, as well as uh, connecting with customers uh, and being able to pivot to the online environment. Um, I have to say, I've, I've appreciated um, working from home myself. I've been able to get a lot more focus time, but I do miss my whiteboard. In fact, I brought my whiteboard from the office. It's just, it's not the same with me on the whiteboard and not having other people huddled around me and drawing pictures. And Mehdi, um, this is only the second time that we've had a chance to, to meet you, new to the company. Um, you come a uh, big role for you. Um, uh, we're really excited to share a bit of an update, but how, how have you been finding your first couple of months? Yeah, first couple of months have been great. Uh, it's a new company for me, but a big, big challenge. I've been 
successful on a, on a commercialization project, but now I need to commercialize these APIs and monetize these APIs in, 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 in our company. So really glad to do it. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, my goal here is really to make the connection between what you guys are doing and the stakeholders that we can have in the chat. I see already some comments from the stakeholders uh, uh, there. And, uh, and, and yes, yeah, so we will, we will, my goal is really to have, to be sure we all align all what you do with the business objectives, right? I will be reluctant about, about all of this. Uh, and yes, and I will be, uh, I will try to be a, a helper and not a blocker for all what you do, but you have to help me to uh, make business out of what you do. And, and I think you just hired uh, a new consultant, right? Yeah, I'm delighted to introduce Alan to you today. He's, he's just been with us a couple of weeks. Yeah, um, yeah. That's right. Uh, hi, Mehdi. Uh, I'm Alan. Uh, I've been here just a couple of weeks, as Claire said, and uh, I'm here to really, you know, bring in the best practices uh, on APIs from from around uh, the world. Um, I've been working with APIs for about ten years now, so so I've, I've pretty much seen everything. And um, my my aim is to get the API program back on track. I can see that the guys have done a lot of work on the underlying platform; looks solid. Uh, but we need to now work on, you know, uh, getting the value out there. And I'm going to be coaching, uh, you know, Claire and John to help them on their journey progressing forwards. Um, yeah, 2020, like everyone, it's been a hard year, and my dog is wondering why I spend so much time at home now. Uh, he, he, I think he'd like to get rid of me, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, no, we're um, we're excited to have you on board, Alan. And I know even just in the last couple of weeks, you've helped us out a lot. Um, and as a reminder for those of you in the audience, you get to be our stakeholders, supporters, vendors, um, partners in this process. Please ask us any questions, and uh, we'll hope to answer as we go. So um, here we are, first um, opportunity for a program review uh, with you, Mehdi. Uh, John and I, in particular, delighted to uh, get an opportunity to share with you some highlights of, of what's been, uh, yeah, we feel, a, a long and um, slow and steady build of, of progress. And uh, uh, we feel that the program has made some, some great strides uh, with, um, we recognise still long, you know, good way to go. But we're running to time and budget. We've got over 100 APIs. Uh, in our um, uh, either in final test or, or ready to go into production. Um, we are getting um, about uh, up to 10 a month more uh, growing at the moment, um, it's creating a lot of demand. We've got a number of uh, projects that have now committed to uh, including APIs in their scope. And uh, John and his team have been really busy building a lot of platform foundations for us. John, can you um, uh, share with Mehdi some of the some of the um, exciting things we've been doing and got on the plate. Sure. Well, we, we've certainly laid the foundation. We, we've implemented the API management platform and the developer portal. Uh, as uh, as you said, as Claire said, we we've published over a hundred APIs, um, particularly at the system layer uh, APIs to expose the core systems, and. Uh, and we've spent a lot of effort in um, defining API standards and patterns, um, making sure the documentation is complete and accurate, and spent a lot of time with uh, developers and, and users of the APIs to, to, to under, so that they understand um, what uh, the, the guardrails that we've, we've set around APIs to make sure that they, they have some commonality and uh, can, be, uh, can be applied uh, quite quite generally. So, Mehdi, I'm um, uh, curious to hear uh, some of the feedback that you've been getting with your execs and stakeholders. Um, any questions and observations on our progress to date? Execs, uh, execs uh, kind of uh, still support today your initiative. They just say that you ask for budget for this weird tooling, API management, lifecycle, whatever. But this, uh, the CIO said that, yeah, he still, he still has support to fund uh, your stuff. Uh, but yeah, but at some point they said, okay, it seems you have great numbers, 100 of uh, API interface, whatever. Uh, but now, uh, you know, the, the big the, the big challenge now is is try to show return on investment of all this practice, and uh, and yes, and the business has to be engaged in that. So this is why they hired me. Uh, and as I'm new, I have a I have this uh, first uh, uh, right of uh, of um, uh, the right of the first impression, right? So I don't want to I don't want to. Uh, uh, lose that opportunity. There is also one important point that Francois uh, Lan 
and other stakeholders mentioned is that we are this project can be also uh, a leading for the legacy modernization of the company. We are one of the leading teams. You are one of the leading teams on IT, but the company has some legacy modernization. So this could be also a, a, a project that will lead that will then show the path to others. So let's remind let's remind that uh, continue to have business support. So uh, yeah, uh, really excited to 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 see that you've done some stuff. But now the goal is really to know how we can transform that into business. And I think this is your role here, uh, Alan, to help us in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so bringing in the best practices, you know, API prioritization, etc., um, is definitely something we can we can start working on. And uh, I, I think we've we've got enough time, right? We've got you know the whole of twenty twenty one to 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 work on it and find some API products, etc. So. Uh, very excited. Yeah, I'm probably um, uh, maybe just add that we've um, uh, I had just had a call, a text from our uh, um, chief security officer, and uh, um, he's uh, uh, Musa is, made, is keen to make sure that we uh, um, uh, are embedding enough of the right security measures as we start getting a bit more progressive with our thinking. Um, John, maybe that's a, um, a good segue, a good uh, intro into some of the plans that you've got for next year because we've got a, a busy 21 ahead. Yeah. Well, well, certainly we want to make sure that we have a secure and, and robust, robust platform uh, and that it can handle the performance that's required. So we, we've certainly spent uh, a lot of effort to, to make sure that that's, that's in place. Uh, I would have to say that in order to, to scale, to serve the, the entire organisation, we, we do have more work to do in, in 2021 um, to, uh, to build that out. Um, so. I, I, I certainly see the, the legacy modernization, modernization uh, being really important. We want to uh, reduce the, uh, the technical debt that's built up over, uh, over, over the years, and APIs are certainly a key part of that, which is why we've, we've spent um, so, much, so much effort on um, defining these, these standards and, and patterns. And I would see more, I think we need to spend um, certainly the first half of next year, uh, continuing to, to build that out to make sure that it's, uh, it's conformant and, uh, and it's fit for purpose. So, sorry, uh, I'm, um, I just received a text. I mean, need to leave the meeting soon for an important one for with stakeholders, but, uh, sorry, I heard like next year, uh, right? Next year. Yeah. We don't yeah, so maybe, um, yeah, our plans are, um, we've got for the first quarter, for the first three months of next year, we're planning to focus on a lot of the um, tech platform debt remediation work. So there was a lot of quick fixes that we had to do this year. Um, we wanna make sure that things are safe, secure, and bedded down. And then we're going to um, progressively over each of the following quarters for the next, um, we've got a, a, a three year roadmap. Um, so for the um, second and third uh, financial quarter into next year, we'll be looking to um, progressively support more of our um, API priorities for the business. We've got a lot of demand at the moment and we're looking for you to help us actually work out what's the most important thing to be to be working on. We sometimes find it quite yeah. hard to see from the project perspective. Yeah, Claire and uh, Claire and John, you're, you're great. Uh, everybody say good things about you, uh, but you, we definitely do not have 12 months. Uh, we, you, you don't know how much I'm paid to do this stuff, right? So we have two months. I give you two months, eight weeks, uh, to prove, like, to show something, some some return investment. I want numbers. I want stuff that show the business stakeholders that yeah, this API stuff is worth something, and so we can continue to invest on tooling and practices and workshop and all what you want. But we need we need to have a return investment in eight weeks, right? This is uh, uh, the end of the year. Uh, we for for ne for next year plan. We need we need to have a proof uh, up there. So I, I really need to leave. But um, I propose we have a meeting in three weeks, right? Uh, I supported. Uh, uh, you know, I sponsored Alan uh, contract, which is actually a good daily fee, right, Alan? But I, yes. I, supported, <laughs> I supported that. Uh, yeah, let's meet in three weeks and uh, and have something uh, uh, come up, uh, right, on the business side. On my side, I continue to try to keep support from the business and and see what what we can get from there. Yeah, help me help you guys. And and also, and you remember, at Musa said it has to be secure. It has to be secure all the time. Yeah, no. Thank you very much. Um, well, Mehdi, we look forward to seeing you in three weeks. Wow, um, guys, uh, can you stay on for a bit of a, a bit of a debrief? Sure, yeah, eight weeks, huh? Um, 
wow, um, that's uh, that's feeling like a little bit of a uh, bit of pressure um, for us. Um, uh, John, how are you, how are you feeling about this? I'm kind of uh, uh, well. I'm I'm... <laughs> Well, apart from the time frame, um, just spent a lot of effort trying to figure out how to avoid technical debt. But to throw in something uh, really quickly, um, how, how can we how can we do that uh, without building up even more technical debt? Well, here's a question for you: um, How much do you know about API as a product or API products? Have you heard of them before? I. Um, I've read and listened to a lot of um, material about about APIs as products, but I've I've understood those very much as um, the right thing, to, the obvious thing to do if you're a you know digitally native tech company, if you're a startup. That that all makes a lot of sense, um, and uh, you 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 would you know you design your organisation around that. You've got technology um, savvy uh, leadership who who kind of um, recognise that. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I don't see that um, a more mature organisation like ours would be the type of um, uh, business that could um, really understand it. It's, you know, we, I don't know. John, John what, what, what's been your experience well, so far? You know, I, I went to an API Days conference a little while ago and uh, I saw this presentation by a guy called Amancio. I think he wrote a book about API product management. It sounded really good in theory, but uh, to be honest, I, I don't know how it can work in, in practice uh, and talk about products when our organization's geared up towards projects. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. So when we talk about API as a pro, like you said, Amantia wrote the book, it's a very good book uh, with Andrea as well. Uh, they're actually two of my ex-colleagues, so I know them very well. Um, we're, we're talking about reusability so i mean that's one of the key things apis we've talked about for years reusability of apis and the product is a vehicle to to get reusability is much better than for example a project um which is more like a one-time delivery of something uh with the with the apis of product uh, we're also talking about consumability meaning it's easy to get people on board um you can communicate it with uh, stakeholders at like a higher level um, so APIs are more, you know, lower level for developers, but with a product, you can pitch it also to stakeholders higher up in the organization who actually stand a chance of then, um, understanding it. So I think that's what we're missing here. I think the underlying platform that we've built over the last years is good. We just need now to use the API products as a vehicle to show the value of what we're doing, right? To have that value proposition. So I'd say within this three weeks period, Let's uh, mock up, prototype uh, an API product, show that to Medi, uh, and then we'll see, okay, if that's more or less on the, the right direction that we need to be going. Okay. Um, that makes a lot of sense. I, I guess I'm, um, I, I, I'm concerned. We've only got three weeks. We've got to be able to showcase something, um, you know, that's really going to um, uh, you know, reflect on the hard work that everybody's put in, <laughs> um, but that can, you know, that, that will also, you know, connect for Medi and, and in terms of uh, priority for the organisation. Um, I know I was talking to one of our, um, one of my colleagues in the project management community who mentioned that they've got a really committed sponsor. They're, they're a little bit of a niche innovation area, um, but they, they do have, they do seem to have quite a lot of time and attention. Um, maybe we could um, uh, get them to be to be the pilot. Um, what what do you think, John? Have you got any kind of candidates for where we can, um, you know, uh, point Alan and <laughs> well, <laughs> an expertise to get yeah, some focus? There, there was this um, project that was looking at um, equipment status um, with a view to uh, helping customers see the the equipment status. Um, so they know when to uh, when, when it when it needs maintenance, or, or and also our our own organisation knows when it needs uh, needs maintenance. So um, mm -hmm. you know that's that's a, a possibility because it's a key pain point. You know, often our customers um, they they don't really want to be a, an engineering workshop and have the uh, their own their own skills to maintain things. But if they take equipment uh, offline so that they can bring it back to our, our workshop 
um, for uh, periodically, then it's um, then it's time consuming for them, and often the equipment is okay and it doesn't doesn't need anything. So to adopt a more uh, preventive maintenance um, approach, I mean that that okay. could be a yeah. Mm. So, sounds good. Is that where you would see the uh, biggest impact from, you know, a, on a customer and stakeholder perspective? Oh, definitely. I mean, this 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 one's been we've had this one on the on the kind of requirement list and the and the give it a go list for um, for months. Um, I think our challenge has been we just haven't been able to get everybody lined up around you know what they actually think is most important. Everybody's got a different customer perspective. We spent so long trying to. Um, uh, design the ideal uh, that um, you know we we just can't seem to be able to please everybody um, right. in this scenario. It would be to be honest. I think we could, if we want to show that we're doing something different and we're getting impact, um, this would be a really good one to um, uh, you know move from being a big problem child to something that's actually uh, finally delivered. To be honest. Um, okay, sounds good. Should we get to it? Absolutely. Um, uh, I'm excited. All right, we'll get the team on board um, and uh, um, off we go. So for you in the audience, um, uh, continue uh, loving the fact that you're contributing into our conversation. So do uh, um, continue to, to play stakeholders. Um, we're now gonna fast forward three weeks. Uh, we're um, about to run the showcase with uh, uh, Mehdi, our sponsor, getting back to um, share what we've been up to. Mehdi, welcome back. Yeah, hello, API team. How are you? Good. A little bit, uh, a bit tough, but we're, we're actually really excited, aren't we, about um, what we've uh, been able to achieve in what, what felt like um, a short time. And so we're going to um, share some of the uh, uh, headlines of what we've achieved um, and uh, 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 give you um, some feedback that we've had from, from customers and, and the business of uh, the progress we've made in, in these uh, three weeks. Um, John, uh, you know, how are you, uh, how are you feeling in terms of uh, progress and Well, I, um, I, I, I'm, I, I think we made good progress uh, in, in three weeks. We, we did take a, a slightly different um, uh, approach in, instead of planning it out all, all in detail, we, um, we engaged with the, the stakeholders to talk about this particular um, focus on, on one particular API. And we, we chose the, um, the, the equipment status API um, because it addresses a, a known customer pain point of unplanned downtime and having to schedule maintenance. Um, we, we did work with the, the project teams that were uh, potential users of this, and we adapted um, to their to their specific use cases. And um, um, yeah, they they responded uh, quite well to uh, to that approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been great. And Alan, um, you've been working with the uh, the marketing commercial team, um, which is a I mean a little bit of a different way, I guess. Yeah. Than, and, um, we've done our uh, design and requirements and, and thinking work in the past for APIs. How can you share with us a bit about how how that's been going? Yeah, yeah. Let me let me show you um, what we came up with. So, so as you said, we worked um, in a slightly different way. We we as a team went out over the last three weeks um, to talk to some customers about their needs. So we had a positioning statement, which was you know with equipment status. Um, you know, enabling the customer to predict when they uh, need the, the equipment to be serviced, you know. So it was a hypothesis that we had that they would need it. So we went out and we, we did a whole bunch of interviews. You know, 33 interviews between us was uh, quite a lot to get through. Um, different stakeholders involved in that internal, exter external. And the feedback we got was, was very, uh, very good, very welcomed. You know, a lot of customers said, you know, this is exactly what we need. You know, they, they want it the next day, basically. So it's definitely we're on the right track there. 
of those customers, we immediately had nine of them turn around and say, okay, um, they'll be early adopters. They'll they want the, the 0.5 version of it when it's complete um, so that they can go ahead and use it. That's how, how big the demand is. Uh, and they gave it like a you know rating out of five uh, with the tendency was you know very high at 4.6. So um, yeah, we, we, we're definitely um, on the right track there. We, we see that if we extrapolate the number of customers we have and the amount of demand we have, we should be getting at least 900,000 per month on the, on the basis of that. So um, Mehdi, uh, what do you think of that? So, uh, hmm, uh, okay, uh, there are some good zeros, right? Some uh, in- so Everyone some likes zeros. Numbers. Yeah, and when, and, you know, uh, when they are after the big number, that's, uh, that's good. No, the, the main question is like, the, all the customer interviewed, right? Uh, what are the representation? Who are the big, do you have big customers? Is it only small customers? Do they have a specific IT culture better than others? Can you can you tell a little bit uh, of the landscape here? Yeah. So so basically, we when we design this product, we have in mind you know features that belong to maybe a large plan or you know less features in a small plan, etc. So it's quite a a broad product and it can serve um, quite a lot of our customer base because we have quite a long tail as well. So um, a lot of the interviews were with then smaller customers, but because obviously the larger customers are also very important to us, we did um, a lot of interviews there amongst diverse. Um, yeah, diverse companies. And um, because we were pitching it as a product and not something overly technical, it didn't really matter very much, you know, that the company was more tech facing or not. For the for the tech guys, we have a mocked up um, uh, set of uh, APIs in, in Postman that we could show them and they could actually try out for themselves. So um, we covered all bases there, but it was a good mixture. Yeah, because I had a, I had a discussion with one of our biggest customers yesterday who said that because of COVID, you know, the, our classic maintenance business, you know, our employees going there, operators, and because there were a specific, uh, 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 like a status that needs to be serviced, like is not possible. So now they need to know it themselves, right? You know, total self-service self -service manner. So totally makes sense. Yeah. I totally get why they wanted that self-service. So I have a question for you, Alan. We have a, our, our monthly revenues of, for maintenance, Right, it's mm -hmm. $2 million, right? So now yeah. you see with nine customers, we can go to 900,000. If we replace the classic maintenance business, which is us going there, but now being there, them knowing in self service directly. On the whole customer base, you know, uh, how much do you think it can, it can deliver if we transform this classic business into self service? The main question is that if we cannibalize, cannibalize our existing business, we need, I need to prove to executives and sponsors that it will be better on the numbers and better on the experience. Can you help me with doing that? Yeah, well, okay, yeah, there's quite a lot to digest there. But you know, in terms of these figures, you know, 900,000 here is uh, just on the basis of you know, quite a conservative estimate on, on what we would get amongst our customer base. But um, it, it, once we get some momentum and the first product out of marketing, uh, then we expect that figure to be much higher anyway. Um, and also, you know, when it comes to like traditional business, our competitors are also digitizing at the moment on their digitalization journey. And uh, we don't want to be the last ones on that journey because then we'll, we'll be um, we'll be left behind and we'll become the Kodak of the uh, of the uh, equipment world. So, um, yeah, we, we, we have to uh, disrupt ourselves before someone else disrupts us, basically. Understand. Uh, we make it self-service so that they know before uh, before it actually comes, so they know when to require us. Uh, it makes it may make some revenues from us, uh, right? That can be beyond actually what the existing maintenance business, uh, right? And and if we don't do it directly, like the competition may be doing, so actually we are delivering better service because yeah. I need a lot of arguments to shut down over the next years an existing profitable business on maintenance you know that we used to be to do ourselves right so apis can can scale definitely the, the offer but i need i need to be sure where you're going guys yeah but the the, the maintenance business still exists as well it, it might shrink a little bit but you know you still need the people to go ahead and do the physical maintenance too right this api business is more like the uh, cherry on the top 
and uh, it's also keeping the customer happy, right? So the end customer whose equipment breaks down out of the blue and they're dissatisfied, we can predict before that happens, get to them, fix it. Uh, and, and we do that with our technology, right? And, and that's what the customer in, in you know, the 21st century expects to happen. Yeah, yeah, I, I get the 21st century, but you know, sometimes when they ask for maintenance and you know, it doesn't need maintenance, they still pay, right? So we have to kill some milking cow here. So yeah, we need really to put the execs in the 21st century, uh, all right? So uh, Claire and and John, so it seems uh, we can tr we can try something here. But if I show that to our biggest customers next Monday, uh, can it support the load? Well, John, um, we're uh, yeah. We're, so Mehdi, we're not um, we're not yet in full production and. Uh, uh, John and the team have been looking at some of the, you know, technical performance and, and so on things that they need to, to do in the background. But um, uh, so Monday we're not ready, but uh, um, we're more than happy to, um, uh, you know, have a, a, a bit of a review on on when we can uh, deliver to you. John, what are your um, uh, some of the things that your team's focused on that would what need to be true for us to be able to um, get this launched quickly? Well, the the, the prototype works well with the um, with the focus focus groups that we we worked with. So um, and but it is but it is a prototype. So we still have to make sure that it um, the uh, the all the edge cases um, the um, uh, are looked after. And you know the customer I think you're talking about, Medi, is is quite a demanding customer, and they, and they have. Um, uh, Big, big volumes. So uh, we we have to check that the platform's going to be ready for that. And you know, to be honest, Mehdi, I'm starting to see the pattern here. You've, you've been with the firm for three months and three weeks ago, you sort of looked at what we've done and said, uh, where's, uh, where's, where's the money? And well, we, we did our homework. Uh, we, you know, in three weeks, we came up with a, a revenue generating um, uh, initiative uh, that we, we think can work, but um, we we still have to work a bit more on the on, on how to scale it. And um, you know, I, I don't know about launching it to all the customer base yet. I, I think uh, we we need to be sure that we can um, we can do a little bit more more testing, um, some some load testing, some security testing, and uh, and make sure. That um, that it that is not going to disappoint people. Yeah. When, so John, uh, when we go live. That. So John, I can negotiate to earn you some time. Uh, how long would you need? How long would you need to secure all, everything and make it available? Look, Medi, I don't think um, uh, we've got quite the information that we need. There's a few other people that we need to talk to, particularly uh, um, our colleagues in the security team and our risk um, our partners, who I know. Um, uh, are always part important part of making sure that we're we're ready to um, to make any of these types of changes. But uh, we can commit to get back to you in 24 hours and uh, give you a launch date. Um, yep. I uh, just need to make a few more contacts with people outside of this this forum. Um, can I call yep. you in 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 a day and ping you if yep. I've got any questions in the meantime? Yep, I have uh, I have to go. But just one last thing. Um, I totally agree with you. Thank you for uh, making 24 hours for a proposal. In case, you know, because this one is just our silver bullet, right? In case, can you, Claire, draft a potential? I don't need, don't need to be reviewed by customers and everything. And Alan, but Claire and Alan, can you review a kind of a, a potential second API as a product that we could launch? Just to say that it's not just a one-off. Right, it's a journey, and so I can I can go uh, uh, to the stakeholders and and the business managers with some things. Just a, another case, right? You know, a put of potential. Okay, absolutely, like a high level catalog of future products that that could come, and uh, yeah, definitely yeah, we, we can do that. Yeah, we have stakeholders who who ask for more examples. Thank you very much. Okay. Good luck. All right. Thank you for your time again, Mehdi. So, John and uh, Alan, can you let's stay back and. Uh, uh, have a bit of a bit of a, a customary retro um, that yes. we do at this point in time. Um, I, I guess uh, I don't know how how you're both feeling. I'm uh, I'm feeling a lot more um, <laughs> fired up uh, than uh, the last time we got together after we uh, we saw BD, which was a bit daunting. So um, yeah, uh, John, what, what, what's your, 
What's going through your mind at the moment? Well, I, I guess I'm feeling better about it, but um, I'm, I've been a bit out of my comfort zone. I didn't look for a career in sales. Um, I, I feel like I've had to uh, adopt some some sales techniques with um, with the, the focus groups and the, and the project teams to um, to get them through, and even with just with the conversation with with Medi just now. Uh, but uh, it, it is certainly much better to to be in this uh, in this sort of conversation than uh, having than always being seen as uh, as the as the policeman uh, coming along and telling people that they did it wrong, uh, but yet still not being able to change it after the fact. So um, I'm adapting to this uh, sort of selling and, and coaching role. Um, and uh, I, I think it's got, um, I think it's got some legs. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's the, the, the pace and the energy that we are um, working at or that we have done in the last three weeks to get us to the result is uh, is certainly a, a different. Um, it, fe it feels different, but it feels fantastic to have actually um, got as far as we've got in just such a short short space of time. Um, and you know, thank you, Alan. You've uh, given yeah, us the pointers on this. How, how are you um, reflecting after that session with Midi just now? I think it's good. I, I think you know the key thing is that you know with just three weeks we were able to turn it around from you know having a program that was going to be closed down to to having a program that uh, looks like having a bright future and and will actually help the company uh, move forwards. And I know one of our stakeholders mentioned as well that you know you're, you're in that unique position of being able to lead the company uh, forwards with this stuff as well. So I'm feeling uh, feeling very uh, very positive. Um, for the future and you know the question would be you know wh where's the the next goal and milestone what do you want to be doing um, next basically yeah well we've got um, uh, a very clear uh, ask from um, uh, from our sponsor that we you know we need to be able to um, commit to a launch date in the next um, in the next day uh, um, John I know uh, um, I'll be le leaning heavily on you and the team to to, to help us give some confidence as what makes sense for, for which customers on that. Um, I guess for me, this this whole kind of the aha uh, moment that I've had is this appreciation of what APIs, thinking about APIs from a product perspective is, is kind of a real game changer. You know, it's, it, mm -hmm. it's getting us to ask questions about um, how, we, how we think about, you know, the role and expectations of our business colleagues. Um, we've, you know, it's been a great way of engaging our, our marketing and sales teams um, and, and commercial side of the business, um, but I'm, I guess, for us to, to, you know, to actually be ready to launch this thing, um, we've got to get more of the, their time um, and focus on board to actually help make sure that they are all ready to um, explain and understand what this means. So, and this is this is unfamiliar territory yeah. Um, yeah. for myself. I, um, I, I would strongly recommend that you take on uh, an API product manager. Uh, or, or train someone internally to become an API product manager. They can really help with that communication between, you know, more of the business side and more of the technical side as well and, and help you to build out the product, understand, okay, the value proposition, et cetera. So that's some of the work I've been doing with you over the last three weeks. And uh, you really need someone working full time on that. Uh, and in addition, you, you need to be uh, going back and having a look at your uh, developer portal. Um, I took a look at that and, you know, technically it's fine. It delivers APIs to developers, but, you know, um, it's not really built for products. So you need to think about, okay, how you, you put product on there to allow people to consume it. And also for non-technical stakeholders to be able to go there and, and at least have an idea about, you know, what's what's the, the value of these products that you're, you're providing. So that's definitely something we'll um, have to have a look at. And uh, I, I know maybe John, could you, could you, say a little bit about the portal where, where are we with that and is it theoretically possible to change it well i guess um at, at the start i'd been very keen to make sure that the documentation was uh complete and, and accurate yep. and mm -hmm. that you know a, an experienced developer would be able to do something with it but i guess what i've realized uh from the conversations that we've had in these groups is that the the business analysts don't really want to read all, all this the 
um, the the project leads don't want to want to read all of that. They yeah. they want to cut to the chase. So yeah. uh, I guess really the there really need to be two levels of, of documentation, uh, or actually multiple, but leading from the the why why is the API there and uh, and what can, what it can do for for the business or, or the project or the team, and then um, progressively go into the detail of, of the nuts and bolts of, of how you uh, how you make it work and how you connect to it. That's it. So, you got it. Yeah. And John and, and Alan, we just had some feedback from one of our stakeholders actually about um, uh, how much can the COVID environment that we and our customers and our colleagues are working in actually help us speed this stuff up. Um, um, certainly communication mechanisms have changed. Uh, you know, could we actually launch something in a virtual sense uh, rather than perhaps the traditional way that we've thought about some of our more, you know, traditional business products. I don't know. Have you got any any ideas? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, um, you know, it, it's an opportunity as well, right? So if you think about the last ten years, have been driven by uh, disruption, being disrupted by you know smaller players in the market, and that fear element, you know, that fear open the wallet for for money to come out, right? Uh, and I think you know, COVID is also there. There's that you know, uh, fear that that you know you're you're missing out on on things, and uh, uh, while well, everyone's kind of stuck at home, and uh, it, it's also an opportunity, you know, uh, to to also get the wallets opened and 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 do things differently, uh, you know, thinking out of the box and all those uh, other uh, great things. So um, absolutely, go for it if if you can find a way. Okay, um, I'm conscious uh, that actually we're going to have to close this session down because we need to get on and uh, oh, really? um, finalize all of the uh, the to-do list for, for launch um, so that I can get back to Mehdi with, uh, with a confident thing. But I have to say thank you both for all of the, the, the work that you've been doing to get us to this point. Um, we've got another, another heavy sprint ahead, but I'm excited where, we're, where, where we are. All right. So, um, uh, where are we going to be in one year or where will we have got to in a year's time? So uh, the, the world at our fictional company is looking quite different. Uh, we've uh, got into a regular um, rhythm of delivering a new API, launching uh, a new API as a product um, every couple of months or so. Um, we've uh, got a, a plan to kick off a, a quite materially significant and different uh, partnering program looking for, for new uh, opportunities, new business models. Um, and our API program is no longer a program, it's um, actually now a, a, a long-running capability um, that uh, supports um, the organization more broadly and we have uh, an API platform um, uh, owner, um, we've got product management capability, we are um, innovating and incub well, incubating some new uh, customer developer advocacy uh, capability and um, uh, we are doing um, a, a lot more uh, in and around the community more broadly and have a, a dedicated community, community manager to support us with that. Um, and meanwhile, myself and uh, 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 each of the, um, uh, uh, John, um, Alan, uh, Mehdi and myself have, have each been able to go on to bigger and, um, and brighter things. Um, our, our, our portfolio of responsibilities has expanded um, as we've been able to um, continue to um, support our organization and its customers and being successful. So uh, and I it's got, been great. And I got my bonus at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's the main thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, um, uh, we brought this to you um, uh, from the API Collective. Uh, you can find out more about us at www.theapicollective.com. Um, uh, individually, you can uh, connect with us on LinkedIn and uh, uh, we look forward to um, uh, hearing any more questions that you've got. We've got uh, five minutes uh, left to um, contribute, uh, to, to hear any contributions and uh, thank you all for, uh, for joining us. Yeah, also what I wanted to share is that this simulation is, uh, of course, can look sometimes to some discussions, but it's for companies who have already started a program and you know who are already engaged into kind of API uh, led the transformation. Uh, was sometimes when IT has done a lot of stuff and a lot of interesting stuff and they played with API microservices or whatever, but let's say the business has never been engaged. And sometimes, yeah, it comes really fast or really in a way that uh, 
that is not directly aligned in the one year or one year and a half. It's just about aligning what the IT has done with the business or, or, or aligning the business with what the IT has done, right, at some point. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is not what happens in many, many organizations also, which is just a kind of legacy organization, as Francois was mentioning. It was a specific case. Thank you for, uh, for uh, keeping it in, this, in the case it was meant to be. Yeah, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Uh, uh, right, or if you've seen or experienced, you know, uh, stories like that, don't hesitate. Or if you have uh, funny stories, are, are actually like weird managers or execs or sponsors who ask you stuff uh, in a way that was not deliverable. Uh, if you're on the IT side, or on the, if you're on the business side, IT people who say no for funny reasons, that was not real no, but just a no to say no, right? That sometimes happens. Don't hesitate. And uh, yeah. uh, uh, or also if you have weird consultants, you know, weird external consultants who never delivered, right? <laughs> that never were... happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> At your price, no, but uh, in the simulation, <laughs> right? In the, in the simulation. Right. So just maybe a question for, for, for us so be, before a uh, question for, uh, uh, from the attendees. Uh, uh, yeah, what could have been a preview step of this? What could have been a preview step like from the zero to the few APIs? We, because we started at 100. So what, what could yeah. have been the zero? I, I mean, a lot, a lot of programs, um, when they start off, if I think back to the ones I've seen, right, they, they start off with this kind of uh, factory mentality where they, they say, okay, look, everything in the organization needs to be API'd, right? And they, they, they try and put out one a week. And uh, normally these teams, when they start off, are measured by number of APIs they have, right? And you still see that around a lot. You know, a lot of people saying, yeah, look how many APIs we've got. Um, but, you know, some of the, sometimes that uh, results in a lot of duplication. So you have like many similar APIs, with slightly different um, contracts. Uh, things like this and you know there's not so much focus on the value that you're providing to the consumer of that API it's more more like okay well there you go we did it it's done right that's not to say you can't reuse them uh, and that they're useful APIs right they, they kind of like form your, your your system APIs it's just but when you're creating APIs you should be thinking you know from outside in you know the the consumer of the API the, the customer of the API and what are you trying to do for them Right, and, and then come back towards the the internal part, and, and that's that's gonna make your program uh, successful. So, one question for John: Sometimes it happens as an architect, right? You represent enterprise architects here because the CIO just acquired an API management solution, and we need to do stuff, right? Sometimes it happens this way, right? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, and the, the metric of the number of APIs that you produce, uh, and architects obviously want to drive. Uh, reuse of, of assets and uh, uh, loosely coupled architecture that's more responsive to change. But um, if there isn't a user at the other end um, uh, using using that API, then it doesn't matter how elegant it is. Um, it, it hasn't um, it, it hasn't realised its its value. So um, this. this there's this challenge, I think, um, with uh, technical people looking at the, the architecture and seeing lots of things that need to be fixed, um, but you can't fix all of them all at once, uh, even with APIs. And it's a matter of, of picking some, some battles that you, well, they're not even battles, areas where you can find friends who will work with you to to fix a certain area because you know that they're going to drive value out of that. And I think that's, that's what we were trying to convey in this, uh, in this simulation. And also, Claire, one, one question for you for the last minute we have, but uh, it's really about sometimes, you know, there are some internal API champions, sometimes from execs or sponsors, sometimes from uh, technologists, right, who believe in it. Uh, how can they do from a first project and evangelize and propagate inside companies, right? What would be a, a classic uh, scheme? And if you can include that, like, what about skills? You know, how do you in build up or hire, you know, skills who know about APIs in this world? So two different questions. So in terms of um, finding, uh, getting the buy-in that you need to be able to um, uh, build the momentum and keep that going and building, 
Um, it's, it's, it's about finding the right sweet spot between something that is really impactful, that's going to um, not make it look like, you know, you just went for something easy. So something that really is at the center of the organization. So an example that we used in this simulation, the equipment status piece was something that many different parts of the business could connect with. Um, but it was also kind of hard. So um, it, it took a long time that you'd need to also balance something off that was that was quick. And, and you kind of want to try and throw a few seeds out there. Not all of them will bloom and blossom immediately, but you will be able to find some 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 things that then um, showcase where the business technology, the transformation digital teams have been able to align behind a common problem as well. So a lot of API delivery work calls needs those those groups to actually be very aligned and collaborate together. So if you can find a place where they all agree on something as a priority, they'll be able to create change in the and, and support from both IT and project delivery and from, uh, you know, legacy tech, uh, as well as the um, uh, important business customer stakeholder group. Um, yep. Talks about skills, you have to do a blend, um, usually 50-50 is what most people tell us. Yeah, for all listeners, uh, if you have, a, if you have a, a last question or last comment, this is the moment to share it with us and so we can enjoy it with you. Uh, we just want to say it was, of course, a happy path or almost happy path, right? I, in 40 minutes, we cannot have too many problems, uh, cultural problems, so, you know, like the circumstantial problems and everything. But yeah, we wanted to show you what happens in a year when people kind of get aligned, uh, the business get aligned with the IT has done and, and what could lead at the end, right? Uh, the shift from uh, classic, uh, you know, business legacy businesses to API driven businesses where uh, uh, some uh, polling uh, business models come into self service business models, right? Uh, so, so yeah, so that was that was an example. If you want to know more about how uh, you know uh, the collective, the API collective, can help you to solve what we call these API acupuncture issues, right? Where actually there is some energy that is not flowing well. Uh, and that stopped the, the, the program in a way that, that should not. Uh, and, and you want to relieve that pain, yes, the API Collective can be there uh, for you to help. You can find uh, more information on theapicollective.com, right? It's a collective of uh, people on every API topic to help you from uh, design, documentation, testing, deployment, strategy, security, versioning, uh, uh, whatever, uh, discovery, developer portals, whatever you name, in, you name them, and strategy and skills. So a lot of topics. Uh, don't hesitate, right? So if we don't have any more comments and questions, I think, uh, yeah, we can uh, uh, let uh, the stage, uh, let uh, other, let you join other workshops. The video will be available for replay, like all videos at the PLS conference. And let's remember that the main two days of the events are tomorrow and the day after tomorrow for the talks. This is workshop day. We were really glad to be with you, right? We mm -hmm. all agree with this, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you awesome. very much. Yeah, 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 we have Bjorn to say thank you. Great team. Thank you to the audience for all their uh, contribution. Yeah. yeah, and don't hesitate because we will we will try to improve the simulation over time. So don't hesitate if you have any feedback or improvements uh, or story elements. Don't hesitate to share them with us. And uh, all, all uh, let's say, si real situation that look like this uh, may happen. So be prepared. It's true. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you. Marhaba, shukran, bye all.